A very good evening, everyone, and welcome back to English Cafe. This is Mamta, and we are live with today's vocabulary session at 4 p.m., where we learn five to ten advanced English words and phrases from daily newspaper headlines. So please join me for the session, and let's learn some new vocabulary. Let's learn some advanced English words and phrases in this session. So please join me and as you join the session, please drop me a hi in the comments. Tell me where you're joining in from and how are you doing today. And I hope you had a great weekend uh, since we last met on Friday. I hope you enjoyed your weekend and I hope you're doing great today. So do drop me a hi as you join the session. Let me see if some of you are already there. Oh, okay. So Ankita has joined. Good evening, Ankita. Thank you for joining. Good evening, Renu. Thank you for joining the session. Um, hi, Ratinder. Everything is going great. How are you doing? How are you doing, Renu? How are you, Ankita? Tahira. Good evening, Tahira. Thank you for joining. How are you doing? Hi, Abid. Thank you for joining. How are you guys doing? Please let me know. Okay, so Abid has joined from Bihar. Okay. Tahira, I'm doing great. How are you, Tahira? I hope you're doing good too. Uh, Rahman, hi Rahman, thank you for joining. How are you today? Great to have you guys here on time. Uh, in fact, I am late today. So we'll get started with the session. But before we start discussing the vocabulary, can I ask you guys to take a moment and share this session? Please go ahead, hit the share button, share it in your groups or share it with a friend on your wall so that they can also learn some new words and phrases. So please do that. Uh, yeah, Renu has joined from Charkhand, right? Good to know that you are good, Zahira. Thank you for telling me. So guys, I hope you have shared the session. Um, if not, please take a moment and share this live session with your friends in your group, on your wall, please share. Now let's get started and let's learn some new words. We're going to learn these words and phrases from uh, today's the Hindu. So it's September the 20th today. We're going to learn the words and phrases from the world page, which is page number 11 in today's newspaper. So let's discuss some world news and let's learn some new vocabulary. So here is this first headline that I would like to read for you. It says, France knew of Australia's grave concerns. I hope you can see it on your screen. So it's, uh, it says, France knew of Australia's grave concerns. To give you a brief idea, so there was a deal between France and Australia about a submarine. What a submarine is, we'll discuss that later. So there was a deal which is now canceled by France. Uh, yeah, which is now cancelled by uh, France. Yeah. The expression I would like to discuss with you here, the word I would like to discuss is grave, G-R-A-V-E. So uh, Australia says that France already knew about our grave concerns. What does the word grave mean? G-R-A-V-E. Please let me know. Grave concerns. What does that mean? Or a grave situation, for example. If a situation is grave, what does that mean? Let's discuss that. So the word grave means something that's seriously bad. That's what grave means. So if a situation is grave, that means it's serious. It's, it's bad. In fact, it's seriously bad, right? A grave situation. If the concerns are grave, that means some seriously, uh, you know, seriously bad concerns. So that's what grave is. Grave means serious. And you know that grave also means uh, the place where dead people are buried. You know that, right? Uh, in many, in Indian culture, particularly in Hindu religion, we don't bury dead people. But in most other, uh, most other parts of the world, people bury the dead people. And where the dead people are buried, that place is called a grave. You've heard the words grave, graveyard. So that's grave. But if something is grave, if a matter is grave, 
if a situation is grave, if the circumstances are grave, if the concerns are grave, that means they are very serious in nature. So that's the word grave. Let's discuss some examples first, and then I'll ask you to use the word grave in a sentence. So here is the first example on your screen. It says, he visits his mother's grave every Sunday. So here, you understand the meaning of the word grave, right? Grave means where his mother was buried. So that grave in this example. Let's take a look at another example. It says, in the grave, the rich and the poor lie equal. It's kind of a, it's kind of a proverb. So it says that uh, it doesn't matter. After you are dead, you are, no, it doesn't matter if you are rich or if you are poor because they lie side by side in the same size of the grave. So that's what it says. And again, this word here, the word grave is used for uh, the place where someone is buried. Let's take a look at another example. Here it is. It says, they are in grave danger of losing everything. So here you can see grave danger. Here we are not talking about somebody dead. We are talking about a serious situation. So they are in grave danger means they are in seriously bad danger. Another example that you can see, it says, this could have grave consequences. Consequences means, uh, you know, the after effects. So if we do something, there are always after effects. But if we do something wrong, the after effects can be grave. Grave means bad and seriously bad. Another example, Prime Minister Modi expressed grave concern over Taliban-led Afghanistan. So as you know that Mr. Modi, the Prime Minister of India, spoke about, um, spoke about Taliban for the first time and he expressed grave concern because he said the, the government in Afghanistan is not inclusive. So he expressed grave concerns over Taliban-led Afghanistan. So that's how we can use the word grave in sentences. And this headline particularly that we're talking about today, it says that um, it's, it talks about Australia and France. And it, it is a quote from Australia. Australia says that France already knew about our grave concerns. That means they already knew about, uh, you know, how, how serious, how bad our situation is. So that's what we're talking about. I would like you to use the word grave in a sentence now to talk about something serious, something seriously bad. Please let me know what examples you have. I'll see if I have any unread comments. Oh, a lot of these comments, right? Uh, right, graveyards. Yeah, graveyard, serious, that's grave, right? Alia says, after leaking question paper of NEET exam, students put themselves in a grave problem. That's right. Okay, Rajinder says, economic fluctuations are grave for India. That's true, yes. Kartar says, the situation in Afghanistan turned grave. Again, another great example. Rahman says, I go to my mother's Grave, yes. So we can also use grave for that. After his father's death, his financial situation is grave. All right. Rahman says, I go to my mother's grave, right? I think I read that already. Good. So yes, guys, that's how you can use. You can use grave to talk about a dead person's grave or grave means a seriously bad situation. So good use. That's grave. and. Uh, I'll talk about the same headline. It further says, Morrison says submarine deal was scrapped as it wouldn't meet Canberra's interests in the Indo-Pacific. Now let's talk about it. Uh, so Morrison is uh, Australian Prime Minister. Mr. Scott Morrison is Australian Prime Minister. And, he's, and they, they canceled this deal with France. So they had given this uh, project to France to build a submarine for them. And they, the, France worked on it for some time, but now Australia has canceled the deal. They said, we don't want your submarine any longer. So that's what it's talking about. So Mr. Morrison, the, the prime minister of Australia says that the submarine deal was scrapped. Let's talk about the words 
submarine and scrap. Submarine, do you know what a submarine is? I'm sure you've heard about this word. We all have heard of this word. Uh, we know that marine is related to what happens in the sea. Let's talk about a submarine. A submarine is a ship that can travel underwater. So all the countries have their submarines, right? Or countries of large business corporations, maybe who deal in uh, the cargoes and shipments, they have their submarines. So submarine is a ship that can travel underwater. Um, India has its submarines. Um, Indian Navy has its submarines. So that's submarine. Let's talk about some examples. Let's use the word submarine. Here is example number one. It says, the submarine is driven by nuclear power. Submarines can be driven by any other fuel, like I think diesel or other fuel, but by nuclear power as well. So the submarine is driven by nuclear power. Example number two, INS Arihant is a ballistic missile submarine. Yeah, so I just, uh, I just read this today. So INS Arihant is, uh, is an Indian, Indian ballistic missile submarine. So again, the word submarine. Next example, the submarine signaled for help. So a submarine is a ship that can travel underwater. Example number four, it says a Chinese submarine strayed into Russian waters. It's just an imaginary example. I don't know if that happened or not. Number five, the captain brought the submarine to the surface. Since submarines can uh, travel underwater so it can be brought to the surface also so that's the word submarine now i would like you to use the word submarine in a sentence so that you can remember it for future and can use it when required let me see if i have any unread comments right now okay um uh, rajinder had said gray weather stalled the nerve wrecking match that's right Okay, yes, Kartar said submarine is an underwater ship. That's right. Hi, Vijay. Thank you for joining the session. How are you doing? Spanish influenza came in 1918 and it was affected worldwide population gravely. Great example, Vijay. Rajiv says India has many submarines. That's right. Yeah, India has many submarines. Kartar says submarine plays vital role in Navy. Correct. Renu says, in 1971, our submarine defeated Pakistani attack. That's right. Seema says, good evening. Good evening, Seema. How are you doing? Good to have you here. I think you've come after a long time. Oh, it's Vijay Lakshmi. Hi, Vijay Lakshmi. Good to know that you're fine. Welcome to the session. So, guys, this was the word submarine. As, uh, as who said, uh, as I think Vijay Lakshmi said that India has many submarines oh rajiv said india has many submarines that's right we have a lot of submarines because we use them in our navy for the security of our country so the word submarine you know it now the next word was it says morrison said the australian prime minister said that the submarine deal was scrapped so let's now discuss the word scrap I'm sure you've heard this word a lot of time. Um, the basic meaning of the word scrap is uh, something that's not in use any longer. But scrap is also a verb. And the verb scrap means to not continue with a system or plan. That means to discontinue a system, to discontinue a plan. That is to scrap it. OK, so to scrap something means to discontinue its use. Let's talk about some examples. So here are the examples. Example number one. It says, Prime Minister Modi scrapped 500 and 1,000 rupee notes in India in 2015. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it was 2015, but I think it was 2015. So he scrapped 500 and 1,000 rupees notes. That means he discontinued the use of these notes, as we all know what happened in India. It was called demonetization, right? Here is another example. It says, we scrapped our plans for a trip to Kashmir. So we scrapped our plans means we uh, canceled our plans. 
we had a plan we were going but then we cancelled it we discontinued that plan so that's we scrapped our plans another example hundreds of nuclear weapons have been scrapped that means hundreds of nuclear weapons do not work now are not in use now so that's what it means another example the project was scrapped at the last minute that means the project did not go ahead the project was discontinued that means the project was scrapped another example they're considering scrapping the tax and raising the money in other ways scrapping the tax means discontinuing the tax not charging the tax any longer so that's the word scrap scrap is a verb you can use it in all the forms scrap is a noun as well if you're calling a thing a scrap that means it's not uh, you know it's useless now it's you don't need it so it's a scrap but scrap can be used as a verb that means to discontinue something to not use anything any longer and there you can use it in all the forms scrap scrapped or scraps etc now it's your turn to use the word scrap in sentences i'll see if i have any sentences already um okay ankita has said government launched new submarines in navy that's right rinat said submarines appeared first time in the war oh in world war 1 okay thank you for that information i'm great seema i hope you're doing good too uh, scrap means to spoil scrap means to discontinue its use as we discussed in right sham says hi hi sham thank you for joining the session how are you today rinat says the pandemic scrapped my plan of traveling around the world yes a very suitable example ankita says people scrapped the covid guidelines in crowded area great example ankita rajiv says running project has been scrapped due to client requirement was not fulfilled okay that's a good example rajiv renu says in the steel industry scrapped is used in many ways yeah in the steel industry scrap is used the thing is called scrap scrap is used in many ways rajin says my old bike scrapped yeah that's a good example so you sold it in scrap rajender your old bike or do you still have it in the scrap good example so i think i have another example uh, majibulla says i scrapped my duty due to burden oh i scrapped s c r a p p e d please correct the spelling majibulla so scrapped please correct it rajender says modi care thoughts no oh, mediocre thoughts may scrap our future great example and very suitable one renu says my plans are scrapped due to bad weather yes we scrap our plans due to bad weather a lot of time great example guys that's how you can use the word scrap as a verb like scrapping plans scrapping a system scrapping something so that's scrap the other word that we have here oh so scrap was the word that we had in this headline so what they did france um australia had this submarine deal with france which france scrapped now at almost at the last moment because australia said that it could not meet canberra's interests canberra is australia's capital as you know so that's what this headline talks about we learned three words here grave submarine and scrap now let's move on and let's talk about another headline from today's newspaper so here it is this news is about myanmar myanmar is an asian asian country so let's talk about it it says myanmar junta's convoy hit by bomb near yangon i hope you can see it on your screen so that's what this headline says and uh, uh the same headline further says several killed in subsequent fighting so first we'll discuss the main headline which says myanmar junta's convoy hit by bomb near yangon so to give you a brief idea about myanmar junta junta so um 
there's there's been a military uh, military coup and military victory in Myanmar where the uh, government was taken over by uh, was taken over by the military in Myanmar. Like um, Afga the Taliban has taken over Afghanistan right now. Same way the military took over the democratic government in Myanmar, and uh, right now they are trying to establish their uh, power in Myanmar. So, so they were hit by their convoy. The Janta's convoy was hit by bomb near Yangon. I think Yangon must be a city. So we'll discuss the word convoy first of all. What's a convoy? Is it Janta's a convoy was hit by a bomb? So that's what we'll discuss the word convoy. The word convoy is a group of vehicles or ships, any vehicles actually, a group of vehicles that travel together, especially for protection. If you travel together, like for example, how our politicians travel. They always travel with a convoy. They have, uh, they have a lot of other vehicles surrounding their vehicle which protect them so that the, if there are any attacks, they can save them, right? So that's a convoy. Or all the imp important people or all the celebrities, they travel with a convoy so that you know, they can be protected. So that's a convoy. Uh, let's take a look at some examples so that we know how to use it. What it means it will be more clear example number one as i said all politicians like almost all politicians and all important politicians travel in convoy with armed guards right they always travel in convoy that means they travel in a group a, in a group of vehicles together for their protection next example the convoy is moving in the direction of the capital the convoy means again a group a group of vehicles that are moving together next the convoy was attacked by submarines. So again, the word submarine is also used here. The convoy was attacked. Another word, another example, the UN convoy was turned back at the border. You know that UN stands for United Nations. That's an international organization. So, so yeah, if you don't know, UN is not a country. UN is just an organization. So the UN convoy was turned back at the border. Another example, we drove in convoy because I didn't know the route. Again, in convoy means in a group together so that, uh, you know, so that we didn't face any danger or um, I didn't get lost. So we drove in a convoy. So that's the word convoy. It's your turn to use it in a sentence. Please let me know how you're going to use it. And I'll see if I have any comments that I need to read. Okay. Um, Good. Thank you, Laksh uh, thank you, Renu, for correcting yourself. Um, Vijay Lakshmi said, "Covid nineteen scrapped the scrapped everybody's routine." Okay, you can say that. But it did not scrap everything, but it did disturb or disrupt the routine. You can say, Vijay Lakshmi, Covid nineteen disrupted the routine. It scrapped many thing, many things. I'm not sure how it scrapped the routine though. Okay. Uh, Mauricio, scrap. Okay. Mayank says Australian cricket captain told Virat Kohli to scrap the T20 captaincy. Great example. Okay. Majibullah says without convoy, we can't fight our enemies. That's right. Yes. So, guys, now please use the word convoy in a sentence. And please let me know how you're going to use it. I would like to see convoy in a sentence. I don't have any comments where someone has used convoy. Only Majibullah has a sentence so far. Please let me know how you're going to use the word. And Majibullah, could you please correct the spelling? It's C-O-N-V-O-Y, convoy. Please correct that. Prenat says, U.S. deployed convoy of army at capital cause, because of fearing riots. Okay. Rajendra says, agricultural minister convoy was hit by agitators. Great example again. Okay. So, guys, please keep writing convoy. Use convoy in a sentence. And let me discuss uh, the same headline further with you. It says, Several killed in subsequent fighting. So what happened? There was this uh, Myanmar Janta's convoy, which was 
which is going on maybe they were on a road and they were hit by a bomb in this city and after that there were fights that broke out and in those fighting several were killed so it says several killed in subsequent fighting you know several means many let's discuss the word subsequent what does it mean so it says several killed in subsequent fighting so what does that mean subsequent is the word i would like to discuss with you and i'll see if i have any unread comments oh i think i do uh let me just see um renu says the minister came in convoy so the main road was vacated by his guards great rajendra says regiments deployed by convoy to the spot all right vijay lakshmi says dean was enlisted as part of the convoy to the popular spot great example vijay lakshmi so let's discuss the word subsequent now subsequent means after that event subsequently means after something um so that's subsequent oh i think this something incorrect on the screen so please don't read that subsequent means something that happens at a later point of time that's subsequent let's take a look at some examples so here they are the first example says this will be discussed in subsequent chapters subsequent chapters means in the chapters after this chapter subsequent means something that happens after the other thing another example there have been further developments subsequent to our meeting that means there have been more developments after our meeting so subsequent means after a particular event number 3 the story will be continued in subsequent issues of the magazine subsequent issues means the issues after this issue so the story will be continued number 4 his illness was subsequent to his wife's death that means first his wife died and after that he became sick next example it says these skills were passed on to subsequent generations subsequent generations means the generations that came after that generation the later generations so that's how we can use the word subsequent um so what happened there was this attack first and after the attack uh, subsequent to the attack there were fights and many people were killed in the fights now i hope you understood the word subsequent please use it in a sentence how are you going to use the word subsequent you know subsequent means after something at a later point that subsequent you can also use subsequently please let me know how you'll use it in a sentence okay let me see uh, okay but i don't have any new i don't have any new comments yet but uh, i think i'll get your comments please use the word subsequent or subsequently in your sentences how will you use it and subsequent is a formal word like you can use after all the time but subsequent is kind of formal which can be used in uh, official professional communications so please let me know how you will use it let me see if i have any comments okay uh, majibula says i want to i want to be rich um i can't understand this uh, sentence majibula could you please make it clear um please write another example or try to rewrite this example okay uh renu says my father gave oh my father what was it i'm sorry i couldn't read that my father gave party subsequent subsequently okay the board result all right you can still improve this sentence renu you can say subsequent to the board result that's what you should say subsequent to the board result kartar says his subsequent failures led him into depression yeah that's 
a perfect example. His subsequent failures, that means he was failing, then he failed later as well. And that led him into depression. Okay, another example. How are you going to use the word subsequent? Please let me know. Subsequent or subsequently. You know, you can say subsequent to something like subsequent to our meeting. That means after our meeting. Or uh, subsequent to his uh, subsequent to his illness, he became very weak. That's how you can use the word subsequent. Try to use it. Please let me know. Okay, which Rajiv says, I do walk every day subsequent to my dinner. Yeah, that's what you can say. Subsequent to my dinner. That's what you can say. Vijay Lakshmi says, this book was subsequently translated into many languages. Yeah, great example. Rajendra says, subsequent results gave more confidence in any way. Good. Renu says, subsequent to board results, what happened, Renu? Please complete your sentence. Subsequent. So subsequent means after or later. Something that happens later. So that's subsequent. So we discussed two words in this headline, convoy and subsequent. Now, let's move on and let's talk about another word. It's a phrasal verb. And this headline is about Hong Kong. It says, Hong Kong's first Patriots only election kicks off. Okay, I did not write Patriot. I hope you know the word Patriot. Uh, Patriot is a person who loves their country. So that's a Patriot. If you did not know, you know it now. Patriot, the person who loves their country is a Patriot. Um, it's about elections. So there were some elections in Hong Kong. Uh, so they say that the elections kicks off. Let's discuss the phrasal verb kick off. Let's talk about it. So kick off can be used in its literal meaning. Like to kick something off is you know, to, to drive it off by kicking it, to throw it away by kicking it that you can use. Um, that can be the meaning of kick off. But kick off as a phrasal verb also means to start. To kick off something means to start it. And to kick off also means to die. So you can use it in all these different meanings. Let's take a look at some examples so it will be more clear to you. So here is the first example. It says, she stretched out on the sofa and kicked off her shoes. So here, you know, we are using kick off in its literal meaning. That means, for example, someone was wearing shoes and uh, the person just kicked the shoes off. That means they just removed their shoes by kicking them off. So that's kick off. Another example, please take a look at it. It says the carnival kicked... <laughs> I'm sorry. I think I just kicked off my tripod. So you might have, my camera might have displaced. So here is another example. It says, the carnival kicked off with a wonderful firework display. So kick off. The carnival kicked off means the carnival started. Another example, I would like to kick off the discussion with a few facts. That means I would like to start the discussion with a few facts. Another example. It says, the show kicks off on 2nd October. That means the show starts on 2nd October. Next example, it says, he kicked off at the age of 80. This means this person died at the age of 80. So that's kicked off. Now it's your turn to use the word kick off. You can kick something off literally, like I just kicked off my tripod. Um, you can use it for that also. Kick off can also mean um, to start something, like to kick off a meeting, to kick off uh, a conference, to kick off a show, to kick off a performance, to kick off a game, to start. And other kick off is to die. If somebody kicked off, that means they died. Kick off is an informal word, so use it when appropriate. Okay, I'll see if I have any unread comments. Oh, a lot of unread comments. 
Okay. Rahman said Pakistan opposition subsequent electronic voting. Um, okay, Rahman, you need to clarify this example. Um, could you please restructure your sentence and let me know what you want to say? Ankita says elder people subsequently taught morals to younger generation so that they can differentiate between wrongs and rights. That's right. Okay. Uh, Kartar says Modi's subsequent success led him to the chair of the prime minister. Great example, Kartar. Right. So he first uh, was. Um, was the chief minister of the Gujarat of Gujarat and he kept becoming successful and which led to him being the prime minister. Good example. Rinat says my health subsequently worsened after smoking a lot. Great example. Renu says in coming Dipavli, I'm going to kick off a new business. Great. Rinat says my car's engine kicked off after an hour of not working. Great example again. Ankita says he kicked off his uh, salon on 1st January. Great. Okay. Kartar said I kicked off my new business after Corona. Great. Another example from Rajender says the show kicked off with melodious songs. Great one. Majibullah says our school kicked off after pandemic. Yes. Good example. Rajender says my day kicked off with bed coffee okay alia says the company kicked off new setups for intrapreneurs okay great what's an intrapreneur alia please let us know rajinder says grandfather kicked off at the age 98 yes that's another good use so to kick off means to die to pass away great examples guys so this was kick off okay vijay lakshmi said um, i couldn't read that vijay lakshmi manager has kicked off the meeting yeah great that's what you can use it for so that was kick off let's move on let's talk about another word and this news is about russia and uh, russian president vladimir putin it says after crackdown on critics Putin's party leading in polls. So let's talk about the word crackdown here. So Mr. Putin, Vladimir Putin, the Russian president, launched a crackdown on his critics. Let's talk about the word crackdown. To crack down means to deal with bad or illegal behavior in a more severe way. You always like you always oppose bad things and people are always doing something for it. But when, for example, a government or a police or a system or somebody like a, an organization, an institution, when they decide to deal with that, that bad or that illegal thing in a very severe way, in a very serious way, that becomes a crackdown. Let's take a look at a few examples. Here's the first example. It says. The government has ordered a crackdown on cyber frauds. So a crackdown on cyber frauds means uh, the government is now working in a severe way, in a serious way uh, in tracking cyber frauds. That means they've kind of launched a campaign that if anybody who commits a cyber fraud should be behind the bars. So that kind of an action, that kind of a serious action is a crackdown. Another example. The school has started a crackdown on students who turn up late. So students don't want, like schools do not want students to turn up late. They want them to be on time. And if they want it to, if they want the students to take it seriously, they definitely have to start a crackdown. I'm sure you also faced certain crackdowns when you were in your school days. Another example, it says drug abuse is rife despite a nationwide crackdown. We know this, like in India, elsewhere in the world, drug abuse is so rife. Rife means it's very common. Um, if a bad thing is rife, that means it commonly happens. So drug abuse is rife despite a nationwide crackdown. That means the government, the authorities are doing their best, but we still have drug abuse. Despite there's a crackdown, crackdown means they take it very seriously and they fight it very severely 
still there is drug abuse. Another example, it says 12,000 motorists were stopped for speeding in the police crackdown. Again, police keeps launching their crackdowns for, um, for those who violate traffic rules. So a crackdown for traffic rule violators. Another example, it says they're having a crackdown on private phone calls from the office. So officers cannot take it lightly, like when their people keep making a lot of phone calls, private phone calls during the office. So they're having a crackdown. That means they are now dealing with this issue very severely, very seriously. So that's the word crackdown. Now it's your turn to use the word crackdown in a sentence. Please let me know how you're going to use it. Oh, I already have a couple of examples here. Let me see. Um, oh, Alia says, entrepreneurship means a system that allows an employee to act like an entrepreneur within a company or the organization. Oh, all right. Got it. Thank you, Alia, for letting me know. Tashu says, we should crack down against the rapists. That's right. Kirtar says, armed forces crack down terrorism in Kashmir. Good. Okay, we should crack down the rapists. Yes, got your example, Tashu. I would like to have more examples where you can use the word crackdown. Can you think about any crackdown, any recent crackdowns? Please let me know in the comments. Vijay Lakshmi said, okay, had crackdown against every student like suspension from the college who bunked the class. Okay. Do colleges have this kind of crackdowns? If you bunk the classes, you'll be suspended. I don't know. Rajendra says government crackdown over those who, okay, with their masks off, right? Renu says the girls decided to crack down to those boys who misbehaved. Yes, we can use it in that way. Ankita says police has started crackdown on murderers and criminals. Yes, good example, Ankita. Okay. Uh, Mayank says, in the 21st century, government data says 60 age enough kicked off human. Uh, do you want to say, Mayank, that people kick off at, in their 60s these days? I don't think that's true, Mayank. The life expectancy has improved, has increased, I think. It's in 70s right now. Okay, so that was crackdown. You know what a crackdown is. Putin launched a crackdown on his critics. You know, Putin is so powerful, uh, and he's one of the most, one of the most feared, one of the most respected world leaders, right? So that was about Russia. Now let's let's read another news and let's learn some new words. So it's about Israel again, another powerful country. It says. Israel recaptures last two jailbreak fugitives. So there were these two people who broke the jail and tried to flee, tried to flee, but Israel had Israel has recaptured these fugitives. So we'll discuss the word fugitive. I hope you can see the headline on your screen. So they recaptured, Israel recaptured the fugitives. Let's discuss the word fugitive. What does it mean? So a fugitive is a person who's running away or hiding from the police or a dangerous situation. So that's a fugitive. If someone's basically a person who's running away from the police, who's running away from the authority, authorities is a fugitive. Let's take a look at some examples. So here they are. First, the fugitive had spent five weeks in hiding before being caught by the police again. So a fugitive is a person who the police is searching for, who are running away from the police. Another example, the police were able to locate where the fugitive was hiding. Another example, a fugitive who spent nearly 30 years on the run handed himself into police in Australia. Yeah, I just read this news today. So there was this fugitive on the run for 30 years. And he, police couldn't uh, find him for 30 years, but during the, during the pandemic, he handed him in to the police because he couldn't, uh, 
uh, he couldn't uh, manage to survive. He couldn't find anything to do for his bread and butter. So he thought it was better to hand him into police. So that fugitive handed him into police in Australia. Another example, it says, $20,000 reward offered for fugitive Tarzana couple convicted in $18 million COVID-19 relief fraud. So this is couple, this is again a real news headline. So this couple um, who are convicted of an $18 million fraud and there's a $20,000 reward on this fugitive couple. So a fugitive couple means a couple who are running away, who's running away from the police. Another example, oh, so I have only four examples here with fugitive. So now it's your turn to use the word fugitive in a sentence. You know who a fugitive is. Do you know anyone who is a fugitive? Anyone who Indian government has declared a fugitive? Please let me know in the comments. OK, oh, a lot of examples for me to read. Let me see. Um, OK. Rasan says, we have to have crackdown towards procrastination. Yeah, why not? Rajiv says, after registering my FIR, police will, okay, necessary crackdown. Okay, police will crack down the thief. That's what you want to say. Or police will launch a crackdown to catch the thief. That's what you can say, Rajiv. The police will launch a crackdown. Or the police will crack down on the thief. Maybe you can say that as well. Kartar says, US forces are ready to crack down Taliban in Afghanistan. OK, is that true? Prina says, danger streets on crackdown after murder was taken place. OK. After murder, after the murder took place. Renu says, the fugitive is not located by police. OK. Rajendra says, Vijay Malia is a great fugitive. That's right. Like, Mr. Vijay Malia has been declared a fugitive in our country because he has he's running away from our authorities. Kartar says, fugitive couple arrested in US after 10 years. OK. Renu says, Nero Modi is declared a fugitive by Indian government. That's right. Tashu says, after robbing, the fugitive left the country. Yes, that can happen. Rajendra says, Nirav Modi is also a great fugitive. Yeah, Nirav Modi, Vijay Malaya are Indian fugitives because they've run away our territory now. But we're looking for them. So fugitive, great examples. So you know, a fugitive is a person who's hiding, who's hiding, who's running away from the police. Now let's discuss another, um, another word. And in the same headline, actually, about the, this Israel news, which talks about recapturing two fugitives it says massive manhunt was on for them so they were captured because there was a massive manhunt going on you know massive if something is massive it's huge it's large it's very big in scale very large in numbers etc so there was a massive manhunt i would like to discuss the word manhunt with you all what's a manhunt and as you can see, manhunt is one word. These are not two words. It's not man hunt. No, it's one word. Manhunt is one word. So let's talk about manhunt. Um, manhunt is a search, but an organized search, such, such as by, um, you know, by the investigating agency or the police, etc. So a manhunt is an organized search for a person, especially a criminal. So the, the word manhunt is used for criminals uh, when the police or, for example, uh, a group of police is searching for a criminal. That's a manhunt. Let's take a look at a few examples. So here is the first example. It says police have launched a nationwide manhunt for someone, maybe for X, Y, Z. That means the police across the nation are searching for that person. So that's a manhunt. And that person should be someone bad, someone who's a criminal, right? Another example, it says, the police have launched a manhunt after the body of a six-year-old boy was found last night. So that means the police together are now searching for who killed the boy. Another example, 
a nationwide manhunt for an alleged child molester is over maybe because the molester has been caught has been arrested now so a nationwide manhunt again an organized search by the police across the nation that's manhunt another example as the conspirators fled a manhunt was launched that means a search for them was launched another example it says the police launched a manhunt for the suspected murderer so that's manhunt manhunt means an organized search for somebody who is a criminal now it's your turn to use the word manhunt in a sentence please let me know how you're going to use it okay kartar says good vocabulary good english join english cafe thank you kartar for promoting english cafe and yes if you are not yet a student at english cafe you can definitely join a course online uh, we offer online courses to help you practice speaking every day because uh, to be fluent or to communicate confidently you need practice and if that's what you are looking for you can join an online course at english cafe um and you can learn from anywhere thank you kartar for uh for this nice feedback vijay lakshmi says the fugitive had spent 5 weeks in hiding great example ashu says america sent the manhunt in israel to kill laden okay renu says the police has started manhunting the fugitive great sentence renu ankita says investigative agencies launched manhunt against terrorists rajendra says ajmal kasab brought by manhunt okay that's right rena says massive manhunt launched after some fugitives have run away from jail great example so yes that's how you can use the word manhunt and now yeah so as i've told you about the courses we offer if that's something you're looking for please join an online course at english cafe you can learn from anywhere you will uh, you know you'll get to practice in a group or you can practice one on one get feedback from the trainer uh, get guidance on a day to day basis so that you can improve your english skills and if you're a student at english cafe i hope you're enjoying your learning experience with english cafe now before we um, before we put an end to the session let's quickly review the words that we discussed today so let's quickly go over these words the first word and i would like you to keep commenting the um, the meanings just the meanings of these words the first word that we discussed was grave please let me know what it means in the comments and i'll keep discussing the words the first word was grave a grave is a place where someone like where a dead person is buried or if something is grave that means it's seriously bad like a grave situation grave concern etc the next word that we discussed was submarine a submarine is a ship that can travel under water another word that we discussed it was scrap scrap is something old and not in use but to scrap something means to discontinue its use to not use it any longer that's scrap like scrap a policy or uh, scrap a rule etc another word that we discussed was convoy a convoy is a group of vehicles that travel together for protection for security convoy another word is subsequent subsequent means after a certain thing later so that subsequent next word was kick off to kick off means to start to kick off also means to die and kick off can also be the literally kicking something off so that's kick off the next word that we discussed was crackdown um a crackdown is when when you take an action or when the system the authority takes an action to uh, to deal with something uh, in a serious way in a severe way that's a crackdown next word that we discussed was fugitive a fugitive is a person who is running away from the police from the authorities that's a fugitive and the last word that we discussed was manhunt 
a manhunt is an organized search for a criminal so that's manhunt so these were the words and phrases that we discussed today please let me know if any of these words or expressions were new for you and uh, also let me know how you liked this session in the comments i hope you enjoyed because i always have a lot of fun with you as you all are so participative and uh, uh, you're so willing and eager to learn grasp and use the words in the sentences so that keeps me motivated do let me know if you would like us to keep coming up with this live session do you do you like it do you want us to have more of such sessions sessions or should we come up with something else please let me know in the comments and uh, also let me know is there anything else you would like to learn um, we can come up with those lessons or those live uh, sessions for you all so do let me know in the comments how you like the session and if you have not shared it yet please share this live session with your friends in your groups so that they can also learn some new words and if you are new today if you joined us for the first time let me tell you that uh, we conduct this live session at 4 pm indian time every day um, you can join us on our facebook or on our youtube uh, and uh, you you will learn at least 5 to 10 advanced english words and phrases every day so guys that's all from me for today's session i'll see you tomorrow have a wonderful evening and take care Bye bye